Hi, this is Laura Langmeyer. Welcome back to the Yes Energy Summit. I'm here with my dear friend, John Asraf. We're in San Diego at Brian Tracy's office, who's also going to be part of our Yes Energy Summit. And I'm here to talk to John about his Yes Energy, your success energy. As you know, um, 44 people have been chosen to be part of this, and we're going to give all of you that are watching gifts and a very eclectic, different group than you've ever seen before. I met John in Bob Proctor's mastermind group forever ago and you were this superstar real estate person and I was just flailing at Chevron hoping to God I could ever leave, you know leave and you're a are. quick learner I am a quick learner quick quick learner oh, yeah. and she applies doesn't just learn well it's because I finally said yes you know Bob fired me from that program I don't know if oh, I remember really? story. Know yeah he fired me from the program and told me until I quit Chevron he had nothing else to do to help me because I was so stuck saying no to everything so decided to say yes and quit and uh, here we are so uh, yeah. So the S Energy book talks about just success formulas and how even in your toughest times did you continue to say yes and where did you get the energy to say yes even then. So why don't we start with uh, a lot of people are very, very new to our world. Sure. So uh, what are you best known for? Let's start there. Well, I think I'm best known for building companies mm -hmm. and building cash cows and having a great lifestyle. And then from that, I started to write some books and then teach people the success principles that I've mm -hmm. learned in my life, and I've invested probably six, seven hundred thousand dollars in the last thirty years on my own personal growth. Yeah. And obviously, didn't come you know in one bulk sum. It was you know fifty dollars here and seventy-five dollars here and a hundred thousand or a hundred dollars here, then thousands of dollars, and then I started to really recognize that specialized knowledge was worth its weight in gold mm -hmm. when you applied it. Yeah. And I found there's two types of people in the world, and there's the person who wants to do it on their own mm -hmm. and wants to get all bloodied and all sore and knock their head against the wall. And consistently do that. And consistently do that. Mm -hmm. And there was the person that I was who wanted to shortcut that system. I didn't want to get bled. I saw my father do it. I saw my mother do it. I saw my aunts and uncles do it. And I said, there's got to be an easier way. And the easier mm -hmm. way was to learn from people who've already been there and done that. Mm -hmm. And so, so did you start with money though? I mean, tell us a little bit about, I mean, you were originally from no, Canada, right? Originally from Israel. Oh, my Israel, father, okay. when he moved from Israel to Canada, uh, drove a cab for his whole life. Okay. My mother worked at the local department store. My father, I remember in 1979, was making $25,000 a year. And my wow. mother was making about ten in 1979, so 30 plus years ago. And I thought that was normal. You know, that, yeah. that, that's what you make. And when I got into real estate, when I was 19, I made $31,000 my first six months. Wow. And the way I did it wasn't because I was so smart, but I just followed somebody else's success blueprint. They told me, you know, here's the number of people you call every day. Here's what you say. When they say this, you say that. When they do this, you do that. And just follow the blueprint. And I was, I was naive then. I said, okay, if they would have told me to squeeze a lemon yep. on my head before I made the calls, would I would have squeezed that. a lemon on my head uh, <laughs> because that's what people who are more successful than I was told me. And so I was fortunate that I had some exquisite mentors at a mm -hmm. very, very young age. And so they helped me get my mindset right. They helped me get the strategies and tactics mm -hmm. right. I knew that I had to have the support to do it. And then I knew from being in basketball and sports that it was up to me to take action. Right. Right. So if right. I didn't take action, um, I would never succeed. I'd just gather a lot of knowledge. So where did the yes energy come from? I mean, because you didn't come from money, I didn't come from money. And there's always that pivotal moment in your life. Um, so mm. was it when you were 19 where you just decided? Um, no, I decided. Was it always in you? Like for me, it was always in me, but I never really activated it till well into my 20s. Do you know, I, I, I share this when I speak all over the world, and, and, and it started off with Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. I used to <laughs> b watch the show yeah. with Robin Leach, okay, some of you may remember that show, and I used to, Big I used to hate how my family was living. I used to hate the feeling of yeah. where we bought clothes. I hated the feeling of not having enough. I hated the feeling that my friends were going on trips and vacations and their parents were driving nicer cars. It just made me feel insecure. Yeah. Not because, of, I don't know if it, I was young and, and immature, mm -hmm. but it was materialistic things. But I just didn't feel like that's what I wanted in my life. And so I started when I was very young to 
deliver 100 newspapers every morning at 5.30. I worked at the local grocery store when I was 12 years old delivering uh, people's uh, groceries on my bicycle in a basket. I worked in, uh, a dry clean, in a dry cleaners pressing clothes. I worked in factories stocking shelves. I worked in pharmacies cleaning the floors. Wow. When I was 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And the only reason I did is I said, I don't ever want to be poor. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want my children to yeah. feel the way I do and I don't wow. want to always have an argument with my wife. And I was, you know, I was 9, 10, 11 years old. I remember one day I'll be married and my parents used to always fight about, about the money. lack of money. And I just remember that yeah. visceral feeling, this will never be me. And I was always wow. a hard worker and I think right. most people are hard workers. They, they work every day. But what I also found is you know, later on in life mm -hmm. is most people are working hard doing the wrong things. Right. And so I decided that I was going to break free. And fortunately, at 19, which is mm -hmm. you know, 30, you know, one years ago, um, I had some wonderful mentors yeah. who put me on the path of this is the way you think, this is what you need to do, and this is you know, this is how you you know adjust along the way. Well, and what I hear though is not only finding specialized knowledge, but you did it. You know, so many people you've mentored, you know, yeah. thousands. I mentor thousands yeah. of people. We still do, and so many people. Yeah. Um, I say they have voting energy. They don't have yes energy. They vote. They say so. If John says to do ten things, let's see. I like to do three. I don't want to do seven. So yeah. what would you say to the folks? Because there's a lot of people that are watching that are in that. They've been right. through the global <clears throat> financial recession with all of us. We've all had the same time. Um, you know, everybody I know has been affected by it. So what would yeah. you say to those people who still want to be mentored, still want it, feel like it's out here, mm -hmm. and they just keep voting? <laughs> you, know, you know, one of my, my first mentor, Alan Brown, he said, before I decide whether I'm going to mentor you or not, he asked me a question. The question changed my life. He asked mm -hmm. me this question, says, are you interested in becoming a multimillionaire or are you committed? Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I said, what's the difference? And he said to me, he says, when you're interested, you're going to do what's convenient. You're going to come up with, with excuses. You're going to come up with reasons why you don't want to stay late and come in early. You're not going to want to read. You're not going to want to apply. You're going to be afraid when you fall to get back up. Wow. He says, but if you're committed, no matter what happens to you, in the market, on Saturdays, on Sundays, on Monday, whatever, whatever, That's you good. will do whatever it takes. And more importantly, you're going to do it the way I tell you to do it until you can think for yourself and you have your own successes. So I'm just going to tell you to do what I know works. Are you That's prepared to brilliant. do that? I said, yeah, my results suck. Of course I'm prepared to do that. <laughs> and so I listened to him for the first six yeah. months. I made 30 grand, which was $6,000 more than my father. I was 19. At the age of 20, I made $151,000. Brilliant. Following his process. See, what he gave me, what I realized, mm. is he had a blueprint, right? He had a blueprint, and my blueprint wasn't working. Right. I didn't even have a blueprint. Right. So at least let's start with one that works, and then I can modify it. To make yours. To make mine. And so today I've got my own blueprint, so. the blueprint I teach. And what I always ask people, so, mm -hmm. and the other thing that, that I can share with you that he said to me, and you're going to love this, he said to me, he says, John, I'm not in the convincing game. I love that. I'm not in that. the convincing we game, right? Place, yep. and, and I said, what do you mean? Says, I, don't want to, I don't need to convince you. I, said, I already know what works, so stop questioning what works. Just do it. And the beautiful That's thing, so when, he, yeah. when he shared with me the certainty that he had, mm -hmm. and I had the uncertainty, I just took on his certainty. Right. And then I applied it, and it worked out. And yeah, I failed. Yeah, I made mistakes. I'm still failing. I'm still making mistakes. But when you get to the yes energy, you know, I always try to fail forward, right? right? You know, so bounce forward instead yeah. of, you know, bouncing back, just bounce forward. And I heard that from a, a speaker just the, the other day yeah, uh, from Australia, actually. This guy was here in the United States. And yeah. I said, oh, that's great. He's bouncing forward. I like that. And so, yeah. so let's talk about your blueprint, your success blueprint that you use now. You've had a lot of companies, amazing success. Yeah. Um, what would you share is your equation? What's your formula that you say your blueprint for success is? Well, first of all, you've got to get your mindset right. And what I mean by mindset is just not just your attitude. Right. Oh, yeah, things are going to be great. Oh, my God. You know, we can do it. We can Loose get through it. And we can have these, these you know, um, simple beliefs. Yeah. What I talk about mindset is having the uh, neuroscientific yeah. beliefs and habits of highly successful people. 
So if you think about how do highly successful people mm. think, mm -hmm. what do they believe about themselves and what do they believe is possible, and then what are their daily rituals? I would mm -hmm. bet you if we took you know, uh, uh, 15 of our friends and yep. we asked them, what are your rituals? Mm -hmm. We would find some common denominators. So yeah. for example, I'll share this with everybody. I learned many years ago to have a little l list and I call it my daily results planner. And before I open up my computer or check my emails, I sit for 10 to 15 minutes to create my daily results planner. And my daily results planner looks mm -hmm. like this. It's, it's the day. On top it has my top three to five projects that I'm working on on an ongoing basis. Below that it has urgent things that must get done today and there's only three to five. Yeah. Then the next is the highest impact producing activities. What is, what is going to give yeah. me the highest impact for my day? Mm. And then I have another one called the highest income producing activity. So with the time that I have available of the you know, 10, 12 hours that I'm going to work, which two or three things can I do today that's going to make the most money? Mm. And so that's I look great. at that and then and I got another line that says, uh, who do I have to connect with today? Mm -hmm. And then on the next page, it gives me a list of some of the other projects and things that just came up that I need to discuss with my, with my executive assistant. So I do that usually around 7.30 in the morning after my personal trainer comes. I meet with my executive assistant at 8.40. We go through my list, we go through her list, we merge the two together, yep. we meet the following day. And then I open up my emails and I go about my day, see what's in my urgent folder. Right. I do what's in my urgent folder, merge it with whatever else I've got, and then let's go. Then the day is on. And so I will usually get more done by 11 o'clock in the morning than most people get by 11 o'clock at night, only because I learned the art of clarity yep. and focus. Yep. And that and, and is also, my mentors. Yeah. And do you also realize that, um, and again, I think one of those top denominators between us is we're driving our day, exactly like you said. Yeah. We're not reacting to our day. And I think most people spend their time opening their email first, so right. they're reacting to everyone. Right. They're answering everybody else's phone calls. So by noon or one, they're done reacting and haven't even begun to decide. Right. And their yeah. energy's all off because yeah. they don't eat healthy. They don't, I mean, that's a whole nother piece mm. that, right, right. If, if you really look through all of ours, uh, you know, all of the folks that have Yes Energy, it's not just in the success and mental brain, it's also the health behaviors that we Absolutely. do. I mean, there's a lot well, of health behaviors, spiritual behaviors. My number one priority is God. And, yeah, and so the first thing I do when I wake up, even before I work out work with my out. trainer, I've is I've got pattern. my, my uh, affirmations, my visualizations, my meditation, yep. then I go and work out. That's exactly then what I, I plan my day. Um, so for me, it's it's God, health, family, then business. Yeah. And so my value prioritization is very, very different than most people. Mm -hmm. So I try to get the highest values taken care of first. Mm -hmm. And I did the other thing that you just yeah. you just mentioned triggered a thought is one of the reasons I am adamant with every one of my clients to set specific written goals with dates mm -hmm. and timelines and plans is one part for what you're focusing on, yep. but the other part is what you know, what you now can say no to. Mm. Because when everybody really else good. is calling you, emailing you, knocking on your door, they have their own agenda, and their agenda is based on what they want to get done and achieved. Right. And so when I have my bullseye, okay, then I don't want to take my eye off the ball. So you don't see people interrupting a brain surgeon when they're when they're doing brain right. surgery because it's, they're really focused and you know most of the things other than brain surgery is really not that important. And so mm -hmm. I've trained myself yeah. to not be interrupted by other people's goals first. Mm. Now I make time in my day for other people, but it's on my schedule, not their schedule. Their urgencies are not my urgencies. Mm -hmm. Their needs are not my needs. And so I've, I've become it's fairly brilliant. disciplined in who I give my time to mm -hmm. and what I invest my time in doing. Mm. And so if you look at, you know, how much, when you're working at your best, and this is for everybody who's watching, right. whatever your unique ability is, your skill is, or whatever you're gonna be making money at, or, or whatever it is, there is the highest income that you can achieve when you're doing that. Right. And any time that you're not doing that, whatever that is, you're getting paid less than you're worth. And so the more hours you can invest 
on doing that, which you should be doing. And there's only a few of those things. There's only a few of those. Not, okay. like it's not ten things. It's not ten. It's only three to five things. Yeah. 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 And so when you, when you learn what that is mm. and you do that, that's when your income starts to skyrocket and your life starts to really make sense and you have the ability to live a financially free life and the lifestyle of your dreams, which I know everybody wants. Yeah. So part of our Yes Energy equation has to do with using your team properly. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the subtitle is the equation to do less and yeah. make more. And most people think when they're reading mm -hmm. that, they say, well, that's about money. You know, do less, like be lazy and have more money. I said, no, it's actually not about that at right. all. It's actually do less of the things you're no good at. So do less procrastinating, do less of website design. If you're not brilliant at website design, don't do it. If you're not good at bookkeeping, don't do that. But so many people that want to be entrepreneurs do everything. And which, you know, they're doing almost everything poorly because they're not focused on that, whatever that three to five things right. are. So what would you say to folks about using team properly, um, just getting those muscles, I say getting those leader muscles, even understand right. how to delegate and put things in the proper place because that makes such a critical mm. difference in you and my life about how we could, yeah. we really could have fun because we're you're not gonna, doing anything we're You're going to love this. You're going to love this and you all are going to love yeah. this. I learned this, again, 30 years ago. Write this down. Hire barter, defer payment, or partner. Hire, barter, defer mm. payment, or partner with people who play at things you have to work at. That's really good. It used to just be That's really hire good. people who play at things you have to work at, but when the market got really bad and yeah. everybody, everybody yeah. you know, didn't have the money, I said, so hire, barter, defer payment, or partner right. with other people who can get things done. I've had people who are making $500,000 a year leave their jobs and work with me for $100,000. i have had people making $200,000 a year yep. who have come to work for free. I've had people who have been out of the market that have got time on their hands right now saying, hey, we'll come and do the work that you need. Pay me sometime down the road just so I can keep busy. Right. And part of that is just getting creative and knowing that not everybody needs cash. Mm -hmm. Right? There's some people who need cash, some people need it now, some people need a little bit now, some people need it in three months, six months, or a year. And so. When you really recognize that you don't have to do everything, you see, right. my, my fortunate, you know, uh, bringing, getting um, raised by my family is they never said, no, you can't. So mm -hmm. I was good. But I know a lot of people that have the belief that if you want to do it right, do it yourself, yeah. Yeah. you know. Uh, right. And they have a lot of these limiting beliefs yeah. that's driving their behavior. And so for me, it was, I'm a master delegator. I'm master too. delegator. I'm like a government work agency. Okay. <laughs> when I walk into a room, people are like, oh no, there's going to be work to be done. I know. But I, I have ideas and I've got things like, okay, let's do this, let's do this. I'm a really good yeah. orchestra leader that way. Me too. Uh, I'm terrible at management, great at delegation, then getting out of the way and giving people the authority yeah. to do stuff. And they love doing those things. Even though but it's a lot of work, they, do they love to do yeah, it. Yeah. The other thing that I, that I recognized. Uh -huh. Is, is to not hire people who can do the job. Mm. Hire people who've already done the job. It's okay, say that again. Like, yeah. And Don't, I would accent yeah. it a trillion yeah. times. Don't so. hire friends and family that can do a job that's more than menial work, right? Hire people who've already done the job. Yeah. That way you don't have to pay for the learning growth curve and the mistakes that they're going to make. And that is millions of dollars. Oh, my oh. God. You know Every the time amount of people that yeah. I have paid? I mean, we all have made that mistake of paying people yeah. because you thought it'd be better to pay somebody that is less expensive, yeah. but then you end up, what you don't realize is the amount of learning curve that you have to pay them through to learn the technology, learn the, whether it's the bookkeeping, the web system, the database system, whatever it is, versus you already know how to do it, you walk on in, you lead me. Right, and a lot of people yeah. in today's marketplace especially, think that, oh, I can hire my friend, or I can hire this person, right. she seems, or he seems like a really nice person, I have some work to get done, I don't want to do it, okay, you do it, and what you end up doing is actually getting the work done poorly, yeah. you end up having to redo it, and you end up spending two or three times more than if you just would have said, you know what, I'm gonna pay for the best to get it done and get it done now, and figure out how to pay for it. Yeah. yeah. So John, we're coming through this, you know, crisis. Supposedly this is our recovery year, you know, and right 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 coming up soon is the presidential year. So that'll be the next whole drama of why people can't get their yes energy on and like get life back. So what would you say to a lot of those people? You know, you've seen it, I've seen it. We've had coaching clients on both of our sides. I I know become millionaires, lost it. And now they're new kind of energy is, well, I just don't know if I want to go again. I could, if I live smaller, maybe maybe I'll be okay. What would you say to those people? Because to me, that's just them giving up on their life. And it's an excuse, again, to stay small, play small, give up, because you know what we do yeah. takes enormous energy and commitment. 
I would say that I'm not in the convincing game. I'm just not in the convincing. What what I know about I'm learning that from yeah. What I know about uh, uh, my work and your work. I don't want to help the people who need the help. Charity, yeah. But I don't want to help people who aren't going to come in excited, wanting to learn, wanting to apply, uh, mm-hmm. go and get the success. And so everything that I'm doing right now is around people who want to work with me, who want to learn, who want to, who, who want to have the, the path laid out for them and then the support to achieve right. it. And so what I would say to those people is when you're ready, come back. Mm. And I think you're selling yourself short, but that's your decision. So I really yeah. have taken the, the stance of I'm out of the convincing game. And I've, you know, I've done that with my children. I've done that with, uh, with clients. I've done that with friends. And what's beautiful is you surround it's yourself with people that, you know, I know I'm hungry. Yeah. You know, I've done well and you've done I'm hungry. I've got a vision. I've got a mission. I've got a purpose for my life. And I'm going to die doing what I love. Now, when people don't have that passion, that vision, Mm -hmm. and that purpose, then they give up. But I want people to create and find a vision that's so big, it draws them to them. I think Tony Robbins said that many years ago. It just draws you to it. You're compelled to get up in the morning. And so when you really, you know, are looking at yourself, you might say, okay, let me play small. This is safe. You know, I don't have to worry. I don't have to work as hard. And if that's what stage you're in your life right now, have at it. When you're ready to come back, we're ready. Come on, get excited. Let's get you back in the game. Let's play. Yeah, yeah. and I think for some people, it's actually good to get on the sidelines and watch for a while. Be a spectator mm. for a while. Mm-hmm. And you know what? And start missing the game. See, Because then they get hungry again. They get hungry again. And yeah. so I know, for example, in personal development, I did years and years and years yeah, and years of personal development. And then for about a three-year stretch, I didn't want to read a book. I didn't want to listen to a CD, a DVD, and I certainly didn't want to go to an event. And I didn't. <laughs> And then afterwards, I said, I okay, miss it. now I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And I went back into it. And for the last, I don't know, seven, eight years, I've been voraciously consuming information and yeah. systems and processes and strategy again. And so I think, you know, when, when people are ready, they're ready. Uh, but I found that the best motivation is when people come to you and say, let's go. Yeah. Okay, now I'm ready. Yeah, I love that. I yeah. love that. You know, and all the, the <clears throat> folks that have, uh, that have maintained that millionaire status, and I was just interviewed on Fox News uh, in the Midwest recently, and they said, what kept the people through this time, millionaires uh, versus those who didn't? And I said, I think it's the people who have a mission beyond themselves. Yeah. You know, like I said, that it's that hunger yeah. of that drawing forward to something that's way bigger than you. Like, I want to change this conversation about money. I want it to be an entrepreneurial conversation, not an occupational conversation. Right. And, and it, that's, a, that's a, big, yeah. it's a big deal. It's not about me and my family anymore, it's even though also, it's really how you're affected. It's also about it's your self-worth, right? Yeah. I've always said that your net worth is going to match your self-worth. Mm. And so when somebody talks about how much they're earning, I always ask them, I said, do you think that God put you here on this earth Mm. to play small. Do you think God put you here with your set of skills, your knowledge, your laughter, your smiles to play small? Or do you think there's a bigger purpose and mission for your life? See, money is just a game, you know, is a game, and it just represents how well you're playing that game. And so if you're not making more money, the question is, are you not trying to play the game smarter, faster? Are you not trying to to stretch yourself? Uh, the other thing that happens is, is if, you've, mm-hmm. if you've made a lot of money and you've lost it, you've also lost the lifestyle that it comes with. Yeah. Right? So now, now you're, you're challenging yourself to live in a lifestyle that you're not used to. And now you've got to really work hard at living at that lifestyle. And what I found with people who've lost money, mm-hmm. most of them will get back up and get back to what their comfort zone is, having a lot of money. And people who... Yeah haven't made a lot of money and have lost a little bit of it, they're okay staying there because they're mm-hmm. comfortable with ha- not yeah. having a lot of money. And they're not used to having that lifestyle. And I'm not even talking about bigger cars, bigger houses, no, jets, and yachts. I'm talking about the freedom to make choices of where you want to live, how you want to live, mm-hmm. what charities you want to work with, where you want to send your children to school, what kind of kind things do you want to do, to have the freedom to do that. Yeah. Once you have that freedom, you can never, ever, ever go back to saying, ever. take away my It's kind of like going to prison. Right. All of a sudden, you know, you've got freedom, like and then you that. go to prison, you go, I don't want to be in here. Right. 
Now that's what I find when, when people don't know what it's like to have that freedom, mm -hmm. they really don't know what they're missing. Mm -hmm. And so what you and I are doing, I think around the world, is we're creating some ethical addicts. And we oh, want to I create some that. ethical addicts around creating We're a lifestyle. We're going to create a club around that, John. Some, That's really some, good. Some, a lifestyle around freedom and a lifestyle around yeah. using your life's purpose, your life's mission to help many, many others with your product or service, your mm -hmm. ideas, so that you get compensated and you can do more good. Yeah. I want to go one more place on our Yes Energy is you are an amazing father to two uh, amazing you. sons. Um, Not based on the conversation I had with one of my sons today. <laughs> <laughs> my 16-year-old, if that says enough. <laughs> so what would you say to folks about <clears throat> growing, um, living as a, as a parent and really modeling that? You know, um, you've, you've watched my journey, uh, right? So shock, I'm going to be a single mom. You know, no choice. Here we go. I'm going to uh -huh. be a mom, you know, 12 years ago. And then uh, again, just went through a divorce and uh, single mom again. So, I've, you know, soon to be a 12 and a 5-year-old. And a lot of single parents that I talk to say, well, when I'm done raising my kids, then I'll get my game on. Then I'll go. And I said, man, you're ripping your kids off. Take them on this journey with you. You know, I scholarship all teenagers for free all the way through my programs because I want those kids in the class and I want them sure. with their parents. And in fact, they're the greatest accountability to parents that I've ever seen. Oh, absolutely. I love that. So what would you say to parents about that modeling? Because you modeled it your whole time. I've modeled yeah. it my whole time. And it just breaks my heart again when I see that. Um, and I'm, well, I'm going to take on your, I'm not I'm done convincing. I've convinced too much. So I'm going to take on no more convincing. <laughs> So without convincing, what do they need to know about being well, an amazing parent? Your, your children are going to learn more by what you do than what you tell them. That's yes. number one. Yep. So they're going to model, you know, how do you bounce back from failure mm -hmm. or bounce forward? Yep. How do you uh, uh, deal with adversity? So I'll give you an example. You know, this morning, you know, my son, one of my sons is probably just like me as a kid. And so he and I just butt heads. But after every time we butt heads, I've made it a point to go over to him, because we had some words today. I went over to him and said, hey, sweetheart, let's go and talk. You know, we've done this before, and let's just understand this. And so I do this partially because mm -hmm. I want him to understand that you can argue, you can disagree, and you can communicate and talk versus hold in the anger. And so we had a really wonderful dialogue, and then we were cool. But what I've found is, number one, more than anything that you can do with them is invest really good quality time with them. Mm -hmm. They don't care how much you have. They don't care where you take them. They don't care. They want to be with you, even if it's sitting watching TV, uh, playing a board game, uh, reading with them when they're young. They want the parent, and I think a child yep. needs that. But they also want to see how you behave you know, in your relationship. They watch you in your relationship. They watch you with your friends. They watch how much you drink. They watch if you smoke. They, they know if you do drugs. They know all the stuff. So, yep. so you can't pull the wool over their eyes for too long. That we know. And so whatever you expect them to learn mm -hmm. and become, be that. Mm, and that's hard that's, for, that's yeah. hard for, you know, because we want to have our freedom. We want, I'm the parent. You're the kid. I can do what I want, but you can't. Yeah. But we're raising the human being who's going to be future you know, Leaders responsible and, and leader of themselves first and then hopefully others where they contribute. And so you've got to ask yourself, are my actions, the way I communicate with them, the way I eat, the way I exercise or I don't, the way I treat my spouse, the way I treat the waiter or waitress in the restaurant, yeah. the way I save or spend money haphazardly, the way I teach them or don't, that's where they're learning from. And so you've got to ask yourself, I say you don't have to, but but my way of thinking is I want to be involved. You know, a lot of parents, you know, when I was a kid, for example, my parents wanted me out of the house because they didn't want to deal with my rambunctiousness. And <laughs> I always like want my, my kids at kid. my house. I want all their friends at my house. Do you know my why? Because, number one, I can control the environment. I can help them have fun. I can create a safe place for them to, to enjoy. And I know what's going on. And so I didn't want my kids to be the kids that always go to somebody else's house. So bring your friends over. Have them swim, play tennis, do whatever you want. That's how I am. I, I want to be the home that everybody wants to come to and play and ski. Yeah. and With rules. And with rules. With rules, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But a safe place, like you said. Safe, safe place. Safe environment, yeah. yeah. So uh, any final words of uh, advice to all of our listeners that are tuning in from all over the world uh, about their yes energy and getting the game on because yeah. you know we're launching in a six-month period uh, and a uh, lot of it's because we want so much yes energy in the world as we turn the corner into 2012 and have even yeah. a better year I think the um, the biggest lesson that I've probably taken away from my 50 years on the planet right now 
is I owe it to myself and to mankind to say yes, despite my fears, my, my doubts, my anxieties, my mm. procrastination, my overwhelm, despite all that stuff, which we all have, I owe it to me. Because if I put myself in a chair like this, you know, 20, 30 years from now, 40, 50 years from now, and I'm sitting in that rocking chair, I'm gonna look back at my life and I'm gonna ask myself a question. Mm. Did my life matter? And did I do the things that I wanted to do? Or am I gonna say, I wish I would have done that. I wish I just would have taken more risk. I wish I really would have said yes more often. Maybe say yes more often to ice cream, yes more often to a walk, yes more yeah. often to, to you, know, you know, whatever it is. Cookie so, dough. Cookie dough, whatever, <laughs> yeah. Say yes to the healthy stuff. Say yes yeah, to the healthy kidding. stuff, the stuff that's yeah. gonna prolong life, give you totally. energy and vitality. Go work out every day. Yeah, just say yes to yourself and stop living you know, with doubts, fears, regrets, anxieties, mm -hmm. um, learn how to overcome all that stuff. Because I think that's the purpose of our life is, is to grow. Our, the spiritual part of our life and our being is. is to grow and to fully express itself. But there's another part of our life that wants to hold us back. It's the, it's the physical part of our life that doesn't want to get hurt, doesn't want to you know, uh, uh, reject uh, ourselves, doesn't want to get yeah. ourselves in situations where we can't overcome them. And so we're afraid. And so fear less, say yes more. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's awesome. And so all of you, we want you to continue to say yes as you continue to watch our Yes Energy Summit. Again, I'm bringing 44 world thought leaders and varieties of tips and uh, just ideas and techniques for you to hold on to. This week, um, you'll be able to get a gift from John as well as myself as you go back to our Yes Energy Summit website and continue to watch as more and more of us continue to give you ideas, things to do, tactics, and we're gonna turn the year together. And uh, in January, we've just announced we're gonna have a Yes Energy event with Hay House. Very in, cool. Here in San Diego. So uh, more details to come, we're looking forward to it. Thank you, dear. I Great said yes, you. and you can too. Yeah, thanks. Take care, more coming soon.